Be open-minded and be a good listener. Ask a lot of questions. Welcome to Finding America. I'm on a 13,000 mile road trip to meet Finnish Americans and figure out why they want to be here and learn about cultural differences. You'll meet exciting Finns and hear about their journeys in America. In this episode, we have an exciting interview with Juha, a Boeing employee and the honorary consul of Finland for Colorado. Juha will share his knowledge on the support and resources offered by Business Finland and the Finnish government for expats navigating their journey abroad. I'm happy he made some time for us to go hiking and showed me the posters of his sons playing football. You won't want to miss this valuable information on how to succeed with your endeavors abroad. We still have one more episode left in Colorado after this one, so please enjoy, grab some snacks, let's go. Oh, before we get on with the show, it would mean the world to me and it would help me creating content like this in the future if you could subscribe, smash the like button and maybe share this with a friend. See you next time. For someone who's never heard of you or met you, how would you introduce yourself? So my name is Juha Mäkikalli. I was born and raised in Finland. First got to come to the US as a teenager. I was a high school exchange student to Northern California, Sacramento, back in the early 80s. And that led to passion for the US, American culture. And then I got to come back and work as a trainee during my college years. Since 2000, I have uh, lived in Colorado, working in business, basically all my professional career, starting from sales, and account management, strategic planning, business development, most recently working for the Boeing company. Do you have any pet peeves in America? Something that really annoys you, but you live through it? Not all that much, other than the frustration with the current political environment. That's maybe the one thing that's been really annoying for quite some time. It's, it's not only a recent phenomena, it's been going on for a good while. You are also an honorary consul of, of Finland. Then do you have any thoughts on how well we do things or how fast we can work in, in governmental things compared to the Americans? Are there way, what are the major differences? I think the major difference is that Finns as a nation are used to kind of ever evolving political landscape. We go from uh, one parliamentary election to another and we can have a totally different deck on board for the coming four years. Even though government policies evolve and change, but the core issues can still be part of the mix. I think from that standpoint, the Finnish government and parliamentary system are really quite effective. Of course, sometimes it might be much easier if we had just one major party who could make the decision on their own, but also for long-term purposes, I think it's a whole lot more constructive, even when it takes maybe a little bit longer to thoroughly discuss and debate things. But in the end, when you come out with a decision, then that tends to hold longer. What makes you want to stay in America? That's a great question. We came here back in 2000 with the idea that we would probably spend just a couple of years in Colorado and then likely move somewhere else in the U.S. for a few years and then probably return to Finland within like maybe five years in total. Well, here we are still today. <laughs> 21 years ago. <laughs> exactly. We've only relocated or moved locally three times during these 21 years. I certainly enjoy the number of sunny days per every calendar year. We get around 330 days of uh, at least partial sunshine in Colorado. How often do you go back to Finland? Nowadays, typically only once a year. Originally, when I came here working for a Finnish company, I used to go even four times a year. And then just over the years, it got uh, less and less. When you go back, what is the first thing you need to do? The first thing I usually enjoy, kind of a traditional homecoming meal provided by my mom with a bottle of Finnish beer, then go to sauna. How do you spend your free time? A lot of my free time is spent on consular activities. When I think about the typical week, you know, evenings after work, weekends. Otherwise, when it's a matter of true free time, I like hiking a lot. And then in wintertime, we uh, ski, not as much as I would like to. Part of that has to do simply with the increased uh, traffic here in the mountains. How do you define success? 
Success can come in many shapes and forms. It's easy to measure it in terms of monetary value. For me, maybe the main criteria though is just that if one becomes really good at whatever it is and is in a, in a kind of a role or position to share that excellence with others, that's a way I like to measure success. Do you consider yourself lucky? In many ways, yes. There have been certain very definite moments in my life which have clearly been purely out of luck or good fortune and then have led to a major sort of uh, direction for me personally. Is there a difference between how people in America see success and people in Finland see success? The US culture is such that wealth, monetary compensation elements that are the easiest measures of success. Finland, I think, has, in my mind, kind of unfortunately evolved more and more in that direction also. But I think still today, Finns have a kind of a broader spectrum of appreciation for other elements of uh, success as well. And we'll pay 50 bucks so the neighbor doesn't get 100. <laughs> and there's this inherent jealousy that that exists in our culture where if someone's doing really well, we, we like to push them, pull them back down. And I think it's changing with generations. And I don't think the kids right now are doing that to the same extent as maybe your generation. Do you have I any agree. thoughts on, on, on this or where, why is this a thing that we have to struggle with? No, I, I totally agree with that because, you know, back at least you know, I can remember in my youth, still as an adult, the Finnish culture and system was for one thing kind of almost negative towards the monetary success wealth. I mean, it was our taxation system. For one thing, it was also some sort of really deep elements of people by and large just kind of wanting to do well enough, but not too well. There's a lot of positives that we have seen with Finnish entrepreneurs making it really big, both in Finland and elsewhere. How do you define failure? A situation where either people that I care on my personal side or professionally speaking, like my team at work would feel that we didn't manage to meet the expectations, whether it was, you know, my personal doing or us collectively. That's when I think about it from the kind of personal standpoint. Certainly in the, in the world of uh, business, failures come in many shapes and forms. How do you and your wife keep Finnish traditions going on? You have a multinational family and so, you know, there are kids that grow up and they, your kids grew up American. And so how Finnish, did you... Finnish American. Uh, yeah, we, uh, so, so I have the great benefit uh, because oftentimes this is a very difficult thing to kind of deal with when you have a multicultural family. My great benefit is that my wife Anne came to Finland initially at the rather an early age after finishing college here in the US. Mm -hmm. And she actually lived in Finland off and on for a total of uh, almost 10 years wow. before we moved to Colorado. So she became quite familiar and fond of Finnish culture, even learned the language quite fluently and so forth. Mm. So uh, two of our boys were born in Finland. The third one uh, here, for us in our family situations, Finnish has always been basically equal to English. I have mainly use the Finnish with the boys and English. We, ha we can have a conversation back and forth in both languages at the same time, no problem. Uh, we do the same with many of our friends and family, but uh, then when we have English speakers only, or even just one English speaker only in the mix, then the language is English. In terms of traditions, we follow all the main Finnish uh, holidays fairly diligently. But I have to say that something like celebrating Vappu in uh, Colorado, even though we get together with the other Finns, mm. it's just not the same as uh, going to Ullanlinnanmäki in Helsinki. What makes Finnish people unique, if anything? I think, for one thing, Finns certainly have Sisu as a national kind of trait, spirit, whatever you want to call it. Certainly individuals from uh, other nationalities, nations have that as well, especially when you think about any immigrants here in the US over the past centuries or anywhere else in the world, when you when you move away from your home, 
there's got to be an element of that. Finns, I think, uh, truly as people, uh, as a nation, have that still today in a different way, more, more holistically. And so I think it comes through not only when I look at Finns here, but certainly in today's Finland compared to many other countries. And, and just to translate, I think for Americans is, is Sisu, or anyone listening, Sisu would be grit. And it's this emotion that we will, we will prevail and we will go through the darkness and the nine months of shit weather and exactly. <laughs> whatever life throws against at us. We have a way and we have a will to just get through it, uh, even though we can be very negative or I think Finns right. complain a lot. Finns do complain a lot and even like under those sort of really extremely challenging circumstances, whatever they may be, where Sisu is really the, the trait that comes uh, or helps us get through those situations, mm. we will complain, no doubt. <laughs> but <laughs> I think complaining is almost like a national trait that not a lot of Finns, we, we don't really bring it up that much because complaining isn't a very good trait. And especially right. when things are as well as they are in Finland and as privileged as we are in Finland, we still do complain quite a lot. You know, isn't that quite a paradox when you think about uh, that versus the now past several years of recognition as the world's uh, happiest country? So uh, it's an interesting dilemma. <laughs> what does it mean to be Finnish to you? For one thing, it's something I cannot really change. First and foremost, I'm always a Finn. It comes out in many ways. I think the continued interest in the Finnish culture is one core element for me. When I think about something like, say, sports, Finns, of course, tend to be very competitive when it comes to sports, while maybe not so competitive in many other ways. That's, uh, that's one area where I feel like, you know, if there's Finnish athlete in the mix versus 10 Americans, I'm still a Finn. Overall, uh, when I think about one core, totally, totally kind of uh, different uh, track of uh, train of thought now, but personal encounters. When I meet a new Finn, I have never seen before, even heard of, but my first impression is that this is a person I can trust unless he or she shows me otherwise. I don't share that same sentiment necessarily with everybody else. I think there's something that kind of speaks to Finnishness being something different. And as a Finn, you can relate to, and as a Finn, you can kind of understand where that comes from. We, mm -hmm. we all still share so much in common, mm -hmm. um, whether in Finland or uh, outside Finland. Would you agree that once you move away from Finland, you become very patriotic and you come, I, I, I always say that we're all in the national team for Finland because there's so little representation out in the world because we are a very tiny nation still. Um, and historically we're pretty young also. Yes. And so it is our mission to represent our country in positive ways and not just be the drunk uh, guys on the street and, and, and you know, do, bringing out that picture that is that's part of the inspiration for me to work on this show is to showcase who exceptional Finns are and how we see our our country and but how we also adapt into to the world we live in. The Finnish government has kind of realized that also in terms of some of the uh, efforts done on behalf of Finnish companies as regards to uh, supporting their efforts to go abroad export-wise and also in terms of attracting investment into Finland. There's this concept a Team Finland that's very strong here in the US, I believe around the world too, but especially here between the career diplomats, honorary consuls, Business Finland, various individual participants across the country and a lot of that really comes from that sense of patriotism when you're away from Finland. Yeah, and I, I, I definitely didn't have this type of patriotism while I lived in Finland. It only started once, you know, in every conversation. And even my, my colleagues used to get tired, like, yes, we understand you're from Finland, we get it. What do you think I need to do? What are some concrete steps that I could take to be in your position in the future? So if you want to pursue a corporate career or just find a local employer of any type, I think uh, uh, doing 
the initial research on your own, really figuring out which ones would be truly of interest for longer term. Not just to get a quick, you know, one or two year kind of an experience, but where, where you see a kind of a field and environment that you would be truly interested in. And then just look into making contacts within that organization outside the formal hiring process. Getting insights, perspectives, and maybe having, you know, a few individuals who can uh, make a recommendation for you when they see a potential opening and all. And to have patience to really do this kind of uh, strategically so you are not making a quick move into something that's not really going to be your best interest uh, mm -hmm. for longer term. Let's do a word association play. I will give you 10 words and with each word, just tell me what comes into your mind. First word, blue. Finland. White. Finland. Sauna. Finland. Sisu. Finland. Black. Wow. Night. Green. Finnish forest. Coca-Cola. A sweet drink. Not my favorite. The Matrix. The former employer's uh, corporate organization. Finland. My home. Love. My wife. What would you have to say to the next generation of uh, leaders? Be open-minded and be a good listener. Ask a lot of questions before you form an opinion or a plan. Try to get a lot of uh, different perspectives. Gain the trust of your team members, subordinates, whatever they may be, by setting a good example in uh, what you do. That'll get you far. Mm -hmm.